Hello guys, welcome to the new tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to learn about FV function. FV or future value function is widely used in making finance related calculations that include future projections. Suppose you have invested a sum of $1000 in a bank at an interest rate of 5% for a period of 5 years. At the end of first year, your sum would be raised by 5% and that would be equal to your present value times in bracket 1 plus rate. Similarly, at the end of second year, now this value would be raised by 5% and that would be equal to this value times 1 plus rate. Now since rate is constant, we are going to fix the reference to this cell by adding dollar sign. And if you copy the formula for the rest of cell, you will get the amount at the end of fifth year, which is $1276.28. Now all these steps could have been done in a single step by using future value function. So before using future value function, let's see the syntax. Future value function consists of following arguments. The first is rate, which is interest rate. Second is number of periods. Third is payment amount. In case you're making regular payments, that comes under this. Present value, this is your optional argument and this is the initial value of your investment. End or beginning. It indicates if the payments are being executed at the end or the beginning of the compounding period. You might be thinking what's the difference between them, but there is. We will see in the next example. Okay, so let's do the basic one first. Type is equals to FV. First argument is interest rate, comma. Second is number of compounding periods, which is five, comma. And since we are not making any periodic payments, we can put zero or just leave it blank. The next argument is present value, which is $1,000. And again, we are not making any payments, so end or beginning, it doesn't matter. Enter. So here you can see the amount you get is same, except for this negative sign. Now you must understand, in the realm of finance, it is showing the flow of transaction. If money going is positive, then money coming is negative. If it bothers you, you can just add a negative sign before the formula and it will give you the exact match. So let's jump on to the second example. Here we are given a present value of $1000 and we are also making a payment of $200 at the end of every year. The opening balance at the end of first period would be is equals to B4 times 1 plus 1 plus weight and your final value would be the sum of your opening balance and the payments is equals to this plus this now opening balance at the end of second year would be this amount raised by 5% which will be equals to this times 1 plus Rate. And let's fix the reference to this cell by adding dollar sign. Now we can just copy paste it by dragging the formula. So basically what we are doing here is, first we are raising our initial amount by 5% and then at the end we are adding $200 to that. And for the next cycle we are again raising the amount by 5% and then adding $200. That's what is meant by making payments at the end of the period. But these steps could also have been done by using future value function. Let's see. Is equals to FV. First argument is rate, comma. Number of periods is five, comma. Here we are making periodic payments of $200. Let's select that, comma. Our present value is $1,000, comma. And here, as you can see, we are making the payments at the end. So we will select N. So we'll select N by pressing zero. Now again, you can see everything is same except for this minus sign, which we can get rid of by adding negative to the formula. And that's what we get as the final result. So you can see all these calculations could have been done by using single formula. That's the significance of future value function. So this is the significance of future value function. You can make a large number of calculations very easily and quickly. So that's all for today guys. This was a short and quick tutorial. I hope you liked the video and thank you for watching.